Good morning, folks. We'll look at the sun and top science news from the weekend here. We've got the winning campground design contest at the end as well, so let's get started at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly calm. The active regions have remembered it's still the start of the solar cycle after a couple CMEs they popped off last week. And we await the solar wind from that coronal hole, dark up north. The only significant feature of note yesterday was a sizable filament that destabilized and dove down to lower latitudes, most minor of ejecta, if anything at all. Everything looks quiet in the solar wind as we await that coronal hole stream. Top quake of the day goes to Chile, luckily a blood echo almost exactly 100 kilometers down at the low velocity zone. Note on solar storm DST and particle penetration into the lower systems of the Van Allen belts and L-shell magnetic fields. Outer layer depletions are quite common, but it takes a much larger solar storm to penetrate deeper towards the upper atmosphere. This is relating to a key topic in solar climate forcing, a threshold event. These particle intrusions can't be tossed into a long-term average. They reach a point where they change the meteorological condition in a very short period of time. It's like taking a piece of chicken and measuring the bacteria at 0 degrees, 1 degree, 10 degrees, 12 degrees, 20, 25, 30, 40, 60, every point in between. There won't be a change in the chicken bacteria, but at one key temperature, all those bacteria will die. The pink color is never coming back to the chicken, and you don't need to spend a long time at that temperature to forever change that chicken. That's the particle forcing threshold aspect of space weather, and they don't last long enough to detect in a single long-term climate average or plot. Up next, here's something you don't see every day. Professor at a major university in a major journal addressing a major satellite project by NASA and straight up saying there is no logical reason or rationale for why you are doing science the way that you are. You're just making it up as you go. Oof. Okay, my turn to take a shot. And let's just follow up with another confused climate article. So get this, their best practice was recognizing insurmountable uncertainty in the climate models, and they cannot actually tell if there is a positive or negative trend in extreme cold events. They say, even if there is a drop in cold events, there would be no way to marry it to human-triggered global warming in the models. And so their conclusion is that the next few decades will see fewer extreme cold events due to global warming. Yes, that has been the narrative of the world for quite some time, but that conclusion really isn't supported by your observations, now is it? Let's launch into space with the cosmic jet. They do suggest a pulsar wind nebula for this one, but for any reasonable velocity stellar object in a galactic setting, the outside of its polar outflows will indeed appear to lag behind the proper motion of the object. Couple lines in space up next. First, we've got more of that filamentary feeding of the active universe. Whether onto star-forming clusters or from the cosmic web into a galaxy itself, this is how we see the activation, a vortex injection. And that's a darn good description, actually, since Plasmanado appears to be exactly what we continually see with their rotations. This one is in the Orion arm, and yes, it's spinning like a tornado. In all the cases, they do usually end up showing how the helical magnetic fields are wrapping around the filament, and yet even as they see the flow of the interior material into activating areas, they never consider these as currents or particle flux. Up next, folks, we've got the red sequence lighting up the galactic alignment charts. How about a nearly eight sigma significance on the preference of the large elliptical galaxies to run parallel to the surrounding environment? Remember, we've seen other patterns with the green valley and blue sequence galaxies, but here, more of the interconnectedness of everything in the red sequence. And rounding up the science news, how about this? Gaia got its first recurrent nova. The different names they give to these, like symbiotic star, cataclysmic variable, mass loss event, they all obfuscate the fact that these stellar boomers are the norm, not just an end of star life phenomenon. Last but not least, folks, we have our four winners of the campground design contest, including your viewer's choice from yesterday. The winners are up on the campground contest page at observatoryproject.com. Your viewer's choice was the sunspot. Thanks, everyone. We'll post more cool ones in the coming weeks, and we have a lot more chances for you to get involved. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.